Over the course of my life, I've learned that things aren't as they seem. I think that's one of the most powerful lessons that you need to learn over time is that appearances are deceiving. What you see isn't what you get. And sometimes the greatest insights are covered in ideas which are nonsense. So you have to go looking for them. You have to go searching them out. A little background on me. Uh, this discovery wasn't wasn't just an overnight kind of thing. It's a it was a accumulated over many 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 years. Ever since I was twelve years old, and I had a fascination for how the universe came to be, and how everything was, you know, here. Why is this stuff here? What is all this? I remember having conversations with my father about, you know, where the universe came from and what our place was and what I could do about it to understand more of it. And I remember one distinct conversation when I was about 11, 12 years old and I really started, you know, come into my own mind and to figure out, hey, what is all this stuff, you know? And I asked my dad, I said, you know, Dad, the Big Bang, you know, that's the theory for how everything came to be, right? And he said, yeah, it's a, it's a scientific theory of, you know, the universe coming into existence in a giant explosion type event. And as a young boy, being that I was raised Catholic, as a young boy, it made sense to me to justify the existence of God because the Big Bang, you know, happened. And obviously as a 12-year-old, you're like, well, if something happened, there must have been a cause for it to happen. Something caused the Big Bang. So I went, oh, okay, yeah, it's the, it was God that created the Big Bang, you know? That was the cause. And as a 12-year-old, I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. So... I went, you know, ahead and, you know, believed that for a few years. And mind you, when I was also, <laughs> I think, 10 years old, I think before that, I remember drawing uh, the the planets in, in school. Or not in school, but I mean, like, I used to grab the encyclopedias that were in my, uh, in my apartment. Like, the, it wasn't the Britannica, it was the World Book Encyclopedia. I think it was the version, like a 1991 or 92 version. But I used to read those a lot, and I was very interested in just absorbing a lot of information about the world and what was going on and new things. And, you know, I, I, I was such a nerd as a 10, 12 year old, 10, 11, 12 year old boy, and I would just read the crap out of those things. And one thing that really fascinated me was looking at, you know, Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune and Uranus and the sun. And Venus, Mercury, Mars, Earth, you know. And I was looking at him as a young boy, and I remember thinking to myself, well, I'm going to draw them to scale. You know, not their distances from each other, but their actual two scale sizes next to each other. And I remember I first started drawing uh, Jupiter and Saturn first, and then I drew, drew Neptune and Uranus, and I made them a little smaller, and then I made Earth and Mars and Mercury is really small. And when I got to Mercury, I was looking to the left of the page and I was like, oh crap, I forgot the sun. So I added the sun in there. And basically what ha what had happened is that I was like drawing these things really big, kind of on the paper. And I was like, oh crap, the sun is just this massive thing. So I drew a little curve little arc on the edge of the paper that represent the sun because it was so massive and um, and I think after after I did that I, I really came to terms with how big of an big of objects there are in in the universe I learned that what we have are constructs so incredibly massive that for all intents and per for all for all reason I think they're a bit out of our out of our ability to grasp how how large they are. And well in short, when I was 
that age, I started to understand how incredibly vast everything really is. Because then I started to look in like how far the stars were from us. And then I was just like, oh man, and I, and I couldn't really, I couldn't really grasp it as a young boy. I really couldn't, I really couldn't understand how vast the universe really was, how vast a, a star is. A star is the sun, like the sun is a hundred times the diameter of the earth. And to really understand how, how just incredibly huge that is, is, is to just take your mind and put it into another place. You can't, you can't really understand the size of the sun. It's it's un it's ununderstandable. It's you can't understand how big it is. And I know scientists are like, oh well, we know how massive it is, and we have these equations, and we know, you know, its diameter as opposed to Earth. But I I think what I learned as a young boy was that comprehension of the size of an object inside of the universe, inside of the galaxy, is not the same as measuring it. To really genuinely comprehend how vast something is, you have to, like, take your mind, you have to take your mind out of your body. You have to have literally an out-of-body experience to really get it, to really get how how big this place really is. Um, and over that, over that period of time, I was also looking into, uh, um, astronauts when I was a teenager and I was curious to see what their, what their recollections were of their events. And going back to that out of body experience that they would be having as they, you know, left earth and went to the moon and I don't, I don't remember which astronaut it was, but it was one of the guys that, um, I think it was Armstrong, but it was one of those guys where they literally told the interviewer that they had felt as if they were having an out-of-body experience when they looked at the Earth from below and they were moving away from it. It was such an incredible moving experience for them to see the entirety of the earth below them that they felt as if it was a spiritual happening. It was very, very spiritual to see the entire earth, you know, below them moving away. And uh, also the event of having, uh, having, being st having standing on the moon and just to look at the earth as it was like in a crescent shape or like a like a not a full earth like if the sun was shining directly at it but if it was just covered by a shadow just by a little bit and just to look at the earth like the entirety of everything we know being on that little ball is just you know incredible but anyways i i think that's i think that really sums up where I was going with this talk is the fact that if if you're going to have genuine understanding of astronomy related matters you can't you can't think that just writing down an equation or claiming that some you know guy in the past figured it all out you you can't really have genuine comprehension by doing that in order to have genuine comprehension you literally have to take your 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 mind out of your body you have to have a literally an out of body experience to really grasp how vast of a place we live in and i i think that goes hand in hand with you know our our urge to just compartmentalize things so i know a lot of scientists they like to put things into little boxes and try to make it to where you know it's understandable and they can't they shouldn't be afraid of it it's it's nothing to be scared of just place it into a little box you know put a math equation next to it yay we understand it now you know i think that that approach towards these kinds of matters is is incredibly uh what's the what's that word myopic where you can't where you can't see far you can only see what's right in front of you but yeah the big bang 
is one of those theories where they try to put the entire universe into a little box so they can place a math equation next to it. And I think that's I think that's absolutely horrible. Because number one, that signals that they're trying to just box the entirety of the vastness of the universe into this little thing. And number two, they don't seriously comprehend how vast of a place we live in, how how incredible all this is. They can't no, they can't comprehend it. They, they look at it through, through, their, through their little instruments and think, oh, well, we understand it now because we have math to explain it. No, that's not comprehension. It's a, it's a big difference between understanding how much a billion is and understanding like the concept of how much of a volume that really, or how, much of, how big of a number that is versus saying, I don't know, you you have lifted a billion ton object off the ground like it's two different there's two different uh con constructs all there there's comprehension and then there's representation comprehension is i think the job of a physicist and representation is the job mostly of a mathematician but i i think this really sums up this talk um I don't know if anybody's going to add to this, but it was something that I needed to say. Uh, I'll go over some more talks in the future. It just helps to get all this out and to overview where everything is in my brain, you know, how I think. Uh, hopefully this can help people out and they can understand what all this is better because me, I'm, I'm burned out. <laughs> I gotta take a break from it. Oh yeah, today is uh, February 12th, 2015.